I welcome our briefers. I now give the floor to Mr. Lacroix. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you for convening this briefing. I am very pleased to be joined today by the police advisor and the police commissioners from our peacekeeping operations in the Central African Republic and South Sudan, as well as by the Executive Director of Security Council report. We deeply appreciate the Security Council recognition of United Nations peacekeeping as one of the most effective tools available to the United Nations in the promotion and maintenance of international peace and security. All of us gather here today, member states, council members, host countries, and military police and financial contributors have a stake in the performance and success of peacekeeping operations. At the time where multilateralism and peacekeeping is facing significant challenges, the onus remains on all of us to continue being proactive to enhance and adapt the tool of peacekeeping. Many challenges to global peace, security, and development today, such as global decline in respect for the rule of law, corruption, disregard for international law, transnational organized crimes, attacks on human rights, and the shrinking of the civic space, all call for unique and specific policing responses. We must work collectively to ensure that the United Nations police is properly prepared, equipped, and resourced to address those challenges. I salute the service and dedication of women and men police officers deployed in our peace operations who work relentlessly to serve communities in increasingly challenging contexts. And I would like to honor the memory of the five police officers who lost their lives in the line of duty over the past year. Their courage and sacrifice will not be forgotten. As noted in the report of the Secretary General on the overall performance of peacekeeping operations, the gap between peacekeeping mandates and what the mission can in practice actually deliver has become quite significant, particularly in some of the mission settings. We are and will continue to do our utmost to strengthen the effectiveness of UN peacekeeping through action for peacekeeping and particularly the areas that we have prioritized under A4P+. We have made significant strides in advancing our commitment under the A4P initiative and in fulfilling the priorities of the A4P plus initiative. Rigorous and transparent monitoring of performance and impact of peacekeeping operations provides the foundation for improving our operations. We recently released the third A4P plus progress report, which in turn ensures that we remain on track in fulfillment of our commitments and the forthcoming report will be provided to you in the coming months. But there is only so much that UN peacekeeping operations can achieve alone. Violent conflict is increasing in many parts of the world, and the number, intensity, and length of conflicts worldwide is at its highest level since before the end of the Cold War. This is all amidst heightened geopolitical tensions, including uh, division in this council. In this context, UN peacekeeping operations can only achieve in many cases, what I call the intermediate goal of peacekeeping, which include preserving ceasefires, protecting hundreds of thousands of civilians, mediating local conflicts, and strengthening institutions whenever possible. These are very important uh, goals, of course, but the ultimate objective of UN peacekeeping is to achieve durable political solutions to conflict. Without the unified political support of member states and particularly the Security Council for political solution where our missions are deployed, we can only serve to mitigate rather than resolve conflicts. We will nonetheless continue to do our utmost to support political solutions despite being hamstrung. We must also manage our expectations and recognize that these intermediate goals of peacekeeping are important ends in and of themselves. The UN police play a notable role in achieving many of these goals. The first priority of A4P+, which is ensuring coherence behind political strategies, acknowledges that entities across the United Nations system bring to bear varied resources and leverage that can support and influence a country's political trajectory. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the United Nations Police has been involved in various national and local level engagements as part of a political strategy in cooperation with regional and sub-regional partners and transition and planning. UN Police in supporting national electoral processes by training the Congolese National Police on public order management to help ensure the safety of election and more globally build uh, further its capacity. 
The second A4P Plus priority focuses on strengthening synergies through greater strategic and operational integration across mission components. The United Nations Police Division continues its effort to utilize the Comprehensive Planning and Performance Assessment System, or the CPAS, including the development of police-related impact indicators to improve accountability for performance. The next priority of A4P+, Plus, which is ensuring the highest level of accountability to peacekeepers, is critical in improving the safety and security of our personnel. In support of the implementation of the action plan to improve the security of United Nations peacekeepers, the United Nations Police have conducted in mission, in mission performance assessment and evaluation team visits to MINUSCA, MINUSMA, MONUSCO and UNMIS this year, and we are working with police contributing countries to address any shortfalls particularly related to contingent owned equipment or command and control. The peacekeeping ministerial meeting in Accra, Ghana this next month will be an important opportunity to help ensure UN peacekeepers are well, training, well trained and well equipped. The United Nations Police continues its effort to create an enabling environment and foster a gender responsive working environment in an accommodation. In the DR Congo, multiple projects have been implemented for the benefit of women, military and police peacekeepers, including an increase in the ratio of shared ablutions, refurbishment of living accommodations and construction of dedicated recreational areas. The United Nations Police also continues to enforce zero tolerance for sexual exploitation and abuse through enhanced, through enhanced pre-deployment and in-mission training. Regarding strategic communication, which is uh, the sixth priority of uh, A4P+, the United Nations Police contrib contribute to the efforts by the Department of Peace Operations to proactively counter misinformation, disinformation, and hate speech. This includes more recently a French language training course on countering hate speech and disinformation during the electoral cycle that was developed by the Standing Police Capacity and conducted recently in the Central African Republic. The, win, the Women, Peace and Security Agenda is infused in all aspects of A4P+. To enhance the protection of women and girls in vulnerable situations, the United Nations Police remains focused on strengthening engagement with civil society and women's rights organizations. In the DR Congo, long-standing community-based partnerships with disabilities-focused organizations have improved the effectiveness of police services and outreach to disabled women and girls in communities. In South Sudan, to address protection risk for women, UNPOL has conducted several gender responsive patrols informed by an analysis of threat levels to women based on the information collected from the community and intelligence sources. Furthermore, with the support of Member States, the United Nations Police has already achieved its gender parity targets for 2025 in most categories of personnel, with women currently comprising almost one in five United Nations Police officers including 30% of individual police officers and 16% of members of foreign police units. Mr. President, A4P Plus is part of a renewed collective engagement to strengthen peacekeeping as an invaluable instrument for peace and security and an expression of international solidarity. Through it, we are better, though not sufficiently placed, to address today's challenges to peace and security and ultimately to improve the lives of the people we serve. This annual briefing to the Council is an opportunity to reaffirm the vital role that the United Nations Police plays across the conflict prevention spectrum, from peacekeeping to peace building. It provides a forum to discuss some of the key priorities for United Nations policy, to which we aim to support the Member States in fostering representative, responsive and accountable police services which serves and protects people. So we are very grateful for your continued and strong support for A4P commitments and A4P plus priorities and for your generous contributions of highly qualified police personnel to serve with the United Nations Police. Thank you. I thank uh, 